Zimbabwe, the country has sought the support of the European Union to sell off 600 million US worth of ivory, uh, 600 million dollars US, uh, 600 US million dollars, I beg your pardon, worth of ivory. It has accumulated due to the global ban on the sale of tusks. International trade in ivory has been banned since 1989 under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority Director General uh, Fulton Mangwanya told the EU ambassadors to Harare that the country has 163,000 tons of ivory and 67 tons of rhino horns in vaults. He estimated the value of the ivory at around $600 million. The EU diplomats who were taken on a tour of the vaults in Harare were told that managing the stockpile that is not deriving economic value or plowback into the communities and also conservation of the same species is a great pain to Zimbabwe's parks and uh, wildlife management authority. Now joining us uh, uh, from Harare, Zimbabwe, he will be joining us shortly. So we will be looking at the details of this story Absolutely. in a moment. Yeah, I found it pretty interesting, you know. Um, so two things that I found interesting, first of all, you know, the, the need to seek permission from the EU before they can go ahead and sell these tasks. Um, the questions as to where these tasks are, you know, are coming from and, and the number, 163,000 tons, you know, of um, of uh, ivory and of course you know from um, elephants and from rhinos it's it's so much um if you read through the story you would also see parts where they said that they normally you know were able to manage about fifty-five thousand, you know elephants every year but now the the, the population has grown to about a hundred thousand and as they die you know these tusks of course are taken from the elephants but there's nothing to do with it because it's you know seemingly illegal to sell them it is you know because this is a it's worth a lot of money and if these laws were not put to restrain people from selling them, what we would have seen would be constant poaching and a great reduction in the number of our elephants um, in Zimbabwe. Now joining us from Harare, Zimbabwe, is Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Man Management Authority spokesperson, Tinashe Farrow. Well, good morning, Tinashe. Thank you for joining us. What would you say has been the response of the European Union to Zimpac's re um, request so far? Are there any positive responses? Can you please uh, unmute your mic? We're struggling to hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. We're going to have to you know, see if we can reconnect with him um, and continue the conversation because it's pretty interesting. You know, a country, who ha a country that has, you know, um, you know 163,000, you know, tons or 67 tons of, you know, of different types of tusk, um, but can't sell it. You know, and I can imagine what $600 million would do for well, the, the economy. Zimbabwean economy. That would be massive. Um, but of course, I understand, you know, they also would need to go through legal ways. Will the EU eventually allow them to sell these stocks? Are there willing buyers, you know, waiting for these things to be, you know, sent over? Um, um, and also, you know, it's important. I think one of the things that we're going to, you know, ask um, Tinashe about is, you know, where these tusks are coming from. Because I, from the story, it says they've been gathered for so long and they've been stockpiled. But now, you know, they can't continue to keep them. I mean, that's a very valid question. Where have these tusks been gathered from? Because we do know that it's not poaching isn't allowed. Yes. Right. And if you want to sell this tusk, it's public knowledge. What are we saying? Are we encouraging people? To, to poach and, you know, sell tusks because, of course, it's, it's, it's worth a lot of money. Yeah, but I, I think elephants that have died and rhinos that have died over time, you know, yes. will still have their tusks taken by government, you know, or by these wildlife agencies. Um, and so those are maybe or very likely some of the ways that these things have been gathered over time. But, you know, that's, that's quite a lot. You know, 67 tons or 163,000, that's, that's, that's quite a, a lot, you know, that would give a, a lot of value to the uh, Zimbabwean economy. And I remember also Nigeria was fighting the um, uh, trafficking of uh, pangolin, you know, for a yes. while. You know, and these are some of the conversations that are still very, very, you know, uh, common across Africa. Head back to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe where Tinashe Farrow is joining us. Thank you very much, Tinashe, for joining us. We certain we, we're certain we have your audio now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Oh, yes. Good, good morning, morning to viewers. So let's go straight to it, Tinashe. What has been the response of the European Union to Zimpac's request? Do we have any positive responses yet? Sorry, can you come again? What would you say has been the EU's requ uh, response to Zimpac's request? Do we have any positive response so far? Um, 
I, I think what is important is to note that uh, these are the first steps of uh, engaging the European Union. And we are also doing this in line with uh, the president's vision of re-engaging. That's what we are simply doing, and we are trying to build consensus around um, wildlife, around elephants, so that at least we can help, um, we can speak with one voice. We are not only doing this with the European Union, but we are also doing this with our African brothers. So that when we go to international summit, when we go to Panama later this year, we are going to speak with one voice. We are simply saying our decisions are based on science, our decisions are based on fact, not emotion. Because uh, what we are doing, we are saying, for those who doubt what we are doing and what we are saying, they can come and see for themselves. And we are open, we are transparent, we have nothing to hide. And we've made a commitment to say, if anyone is going to give us this money, that person is free to put it how the money is going to be used. We've made it clear that we're going to use that money to put the money back into conservation. We're going to put money back into conservation because there are a lot of costs which are associated with the looking after uh, these elephants. And of late, uh, I think most people are pitching us because there's really nothing that we're benefiting from them including communities who bear the brand of sharing borders with wildlife. Okay, it, it, it also is believed, and I think we spoke about this already, that the country now has over 100,000 elephants, double what it can actually support. Um, what challenges does this pose for Zim Parks and Zimbabwe? Um, I think it's a disaster which is waiting to happen. Our habitat loss is real, it's happening. The animals are becoming a danger unto themselves. Loss of habitat, climate change, human wildlife conflict, people are being killed every day. Uh, animals are being killed, domestic, petrol, both. So in other words, our people are losing their livelihoods due to this, uh, due to, to this problem. And as we move into the dry season, most importantly, uh, we would have less water in the park and the animals will be moving long distances in search of water and in search of food. And conflict definitely, definitely happens. And human are at the at the end of suffering from this problem. And they're not benefiting anything. Their crops are destroyed, they're losing their lives, and they have nothing to show. And it becomes difficult for us to successfully conserve because at the end of the day, people have nothing to show. We want to monetize the ivory that we have so that at least we can build roads, schools, education, clinics, because they have something to show. We are simply saying they must see these animals as an economic opportunity for job creation, as an economic opportunity for infrastructure development. Because the wildlife, it costs a lot of money to look after this wildlife. We do a lot of law enforcement, anti-poaching, and even retrieving the ivory that we have in, in the world. And you need to know that most of this wildlife, more than 30%, between 30 to 40% of this ivory comes from natural mortality. When elephants die, we retrieve the, 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 the ivory, we, we, we stop it. And it's a cost, a hidden cost that most people don't look at. All right, let's go back to 2019, where Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe were denied the right to sell ivory acquired through natural deaths, confiscation and calling. Would you say that there are plans to revisit this request? Yes, we, that, that's why we are, we are engaging everyone uh, on the globe, international community, because our bid to sell or to, 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 to sell our, 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 our elephant product was rejected, mainly not because of science, but because of emotion. We don't have enough numbers here in Southern Africa to push that forward. But you know of the remaining 400,000 elephants, more than 65% they are within SADAC. So we are a major, major player when it comes to wildlife management. But what we do not have are the numbers. That's why we're engaging everyone. We're talking to SADAC, we're talking to Africa, we are talking to the European Union. The European Union, for example, you look at 26, 27 countries, that's a big number. If you look at the, how much we lost in, uh, in, in Geneva last time, we are simply saying we want to revive that, we want to continue engaging. Because what we are saying, we are saying, listen to us, hear us. What we are saying is science based. These are, these are not thumbs up figures when you say it's about science. It's about the future of this country. It's about the future of Sadat. Habitat loss is genuine. The elephants are slowly becoming a danger unto themselves. As I'm speaking to you now, it's one of our one of the biggest parks in, in, in the country, Wanke National Park. We have there's a research which was done which is showing that vouchers are facing extinction. The breeding cycle of vouchers is being affected because you all know that elephants have a tendency of knocking down trees. And if they knock down trees, the breeding cycle of vouchers are, are affected because vouchers can only breed 
at certain tree heights and those trees are no longer there. And these are the challenges. We are not only talking about uh, elephants because we don't want to create elephant park. We want to create a park with all the animals. And the good thing is, in the history of this country, we don't have a record of an animal or a species which has gone into extinct. We don't have a record or a, a, a history of a park which has been decasated. So we are doing much with little resources, with nothing to show. And it demoralizes us at a time when you look at this resource for no benefit, not only for the communities, but also for the people who spend day and night looking after our most treasured asset, which is right. wildlife. Okay. All right, Tanashi, thank you so much um, for, of course, this conversation. It's very interesting, actually, you know, makes me uh, think about all the wildlife and all the, you know, value that Africa, you know, has, you know, in that regard. But thank you very much. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.